My name is John Utley. Uh, I came to America in 1939. I was born in Moscow in 1934. Um, my mother was English, my father Russian. My father was taken away in the purges, arrested in 1936. My mother had kept me on her passport as a British subject. In those days, no Russian baby could leave the country without enormous permissions. And uh, when I was born, she kept me on her, she put me on her passport and my birth certificate had uh, only her name. No Russian baby could get out. When my father was arrested and, and when I was born, it was already dangerous. Many, many people were being taken away to the gulag. Uh, my mother tried for two weeks to get him out, to do something, to get, get in touch, to find out why he'd been arrested even. And then she began to fear terribly for me. Uh, often the, the wives of, of prisoners were taken as well, and the children were just left out in the streets, or babies even. So she got out to London, to England, with, with me as a child, and that's why I'm alive and, and here. And that was a 36. In 39, we came to America. What's interesting is that she, she was very tied in with the English left, and she got a letter sent to Stalin on behalf of my father, signed by Bertrand Russell, George Bernard Shaw, the top English uh, socialists uh, urging that he be freed and uh, asking for the charges. And I'd heard of this letter, and years later, when we went to Moscow, I was given the files of my father by the, at the FSB, the hereditor of the KGB uh, archives in Moscow, and there was, the, there was the letter to Stalin signed by these people. So didn't help, of course. He was in Lubyanka several months first. That's the big prison uh, in Moscow. And my mother had the first week or two, she sent, got fresh underwear to him and changed and sent him some, some chocolates that she'd gotten. And she had thought that maybe he would see they were foreign chocolate, that that meant that she was um, uh, in touch, or I forget now the detail, but it meant that I was safe somehow. It was something that from England, I guess she brought some chocolate, which if he ever gotten them, that he would have known that she'd gotten me out to England. So that was, um, and uh, when I visited the place where he was executed, of course, what went through my mind, how could he have ever imagined that his son one day would come to see that? Uh, a Russian friend of mine, who'd, a former a refugee, who'd, but was a professor here in America, suggested why, a few years ago, why don't you try and find the documents for your father, because this, they were available now. And I said, yes, please, if you can. And he went, and he, he, got, he went to the uh, archives of the KGB, FSB, and there's, uh, there are files, thousands of, uh, hundreds of thousands of files, and there was the file of my father, which had all this information, and and uh, and it's it said later that he'd been arrested because he was a Trotskyist, and that. And we went then from that followed that they said there were more documents in Uchta. Uchta was the provincial capital of the state of Komi. Komi is an enormous state in European Russia, just to the west of the Urals, as larger than France, where many of the camps were. And we went then later and found the re other documents. In, fa in fact, I should say first, the, we wrote them and they were sent through the Russian embassy to us. Whatever, those days are over, I think. And uh, with that information, we went up to, to Vorkuta, where he, where he uh, died. And this was only possible because of Memorial, the wonderful group in Russia that researches in the past cases and, and fights today for, for human rights inside Russia. And the representatives of Memorial in Uchta and in Vorkuta took us. And in Vorkuta, we learned that he had been executed, my father, at the brick quarry, was called. This place, the brick quarry, 
Brick, B-R-I-C-K, was mentioned in Solzhenitsyn's book, The Gulag Archipelago, as a place where two or three thousand uh, men and women were executed, but nobody knew where it was. After my visit, the people in Memorial started researching and they found where it had been. It was a number of miles outside of Vorkuta. And they went once, and then when I arrived, we hiked there a second time. And one can tell where there's been human activity because the vegetation is different. The, the tundra, or tiger, which makes them, uh, is, has a certain flat vegetation. Where there have been buildings and stuff, it's different vegetation. And they, they knew more or less where it was. And so this place was discovered finally where it was by the uh, uh, memor memorial who then took me out there. And this is in this little video of uh, on reason.tv. And we found most interesting was that my father had been one of three uh, leaders of a hunger strike in the camps. And he had been condemned to solitary confinement for three months, which was hell in itself, and then executed, among others. Seventeen were executed from the whole camp, and there were three. He had been one of the leaders of the hunger strike in the, in the camps. And when I went there, my first thought, I guess we all think this way, would I rather die from a firing squad, which, well, it was a machine gun, they gunned them down in groups of 40 by machine gun fire, uh, or have died of hunger and cold? And I thought, well, I'd take the, the machine gun any day. I don't think one understands, especially here in America, how does one know? The cold and being hungry and cold is my misery.